Are government schools better or private schools, homeschooling or unschooling? I was reared in the back hills of Tennessee in a Mennonite community and I went to Mennonite schools off and on a number of different ones uh, and from age six uh, up until age 13 or so, uh, 12 or 13, whenever I graduated from eighth grade. and. My experience was very different than, than most people's. There was one little school that Emma Gunther had in Muddy Pond, Tennessee, and uh, we I think there were nine students. It was one room, no electricity, no running water. We had the kerosene lantern, the cows out in the pasture would be you know, rubbing, their, rubbing up against the windows of the school. Uh, another school that I went to had two rooms. Uh, I divided first through fourth grade in one room in fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth in the next room. And that school, I actually would ride my horse about three miles to get to school each day and three miles back, kept the horse in the neighbor's pasture. And after that, I, I started a correspondence course for, for high school, but didn't get that much done. Went to a, a government school for maybe a day. I think maybe it was two days. Uh, just, oh boy, was that not right for me. Went to a Baptist uh, school in Woodbury, Tennessee, I think it was, and uh, just another small private school, kind of a self-paced kind of thing. And then I just dropped out and did nothing. And my mother was okay with that. She knew I was smart and it's not like I wasn't going to learn the things. And so then when I was uh, 18 years old, I think, finally decided to go to college and uh, wanted to pursue my career of, of being a, an enforcer for the, the government. I had very different worldviews then. And so I, I got a GED, and, uh, which is quick and easy. It's just simple as can be. I mean, even with an eighth grade education is basically what I had in, in private small schools. And then a, a gap of many years between easy, easy, easy. So then after I got that, I went down to the, the local community college and uh, did the testing. And I, uh, what was it? Yeah, math. Math I was horrible in. Like algebra, that kind of stuff. I'm just terrible. And in other areas like reading, uh, reading comprehension, I was at a, a master's degree level. And we read books. We didn't have a television or a radio until I was 16. So my entertainment was reading books and learning about things on my own, self-teaching. Um, so that's the background from which I come. And so now I look at all the different options of the government schools. The private schools, most of most of them, I, I believe, are monotheist schools uh, of the Christian variety. And then there is homeschooling. Many of the people that do that, I find, are also uh, theists of some sort. Uh, and, and not all are, but that's the most of the communities I know of are. And so it's kind of a, uh, a religious-based education as well. And then the fastest growing segment, uh, there are a group of intellectuals, forward-thinking experimenters out there that are kind of realizing that school is not the greatest way to learn things. Being curious about something and then investigating that thing is the way to learn it. And you can't tell a child that's six years old or 10 years old that today, right now, they should be interested in uh, photosynthesis and we're going to sit in a room with your back straight and dressed nicely in a professional tie because you're a professional little gentleman and we're going to learn about photosynthesis because it is time for science. It's just been proven that that's not a great way to learn. It's never I mean, in the workplace. When I hire people to work for me, you don't sit down in a sterile environment and do like the, the old school uh, style is horrible. So this unschooling movement is, you have your kiddos, you don't make them learn anything, you just provide them with things that might stimulate their imagination. And when little Johnny is interested in, a, in dinosaurs, you buy him some dinosaur toys and you go get a book on dinosaurs and, and maybe you take a trip to the local place where they dig up fossils and they, you, you just you learn about dinosaurs. And your job is to provide Johnny with the resources to learn about these things. And then when Johnny loses interest, and most likely he will, and now all of a sudden he's interested in rock and roll. 
well, it's time to get Jimmy and uh, Johnny <laughs> access to a, uh, a guitar or some drums or, or get some old pots and pans from the kitchen and turn them upside down and get that neighbor friend from church or your work or whatever that used to play drums and have them come over and teach them some stuff and encourage them to look at YouTube videos on how to play drums. And then maybe that whole rock and roll drummer guitarist phase goes away and are interested in long range shooting. And if you're going to be a long range shooter, you've got to know math. So little Johnny's motivated to, to find out about minutes of angle and, and division and subtraction and, and so on. And, and if he's not at that point and he turns out to be 14 or 15 years old and still doesn't have a basic grasp of mathematics, that was me. That's why I told you that story. It's okay. You can go on in life and, and you can make it. Now you're not going to be able to achieve the same things that you might have been able to if you did have a good understanding of advanced mathematics, algebra, tri trigonometry, all this stuff. No, you're going to have a very different set of opportunities. So you're not going to be able to be a, a scientist, a, a mechanical engineer, unless you understand some of those things. However, you could still be a wonderful business owner, public speaker, mechanic, uh, eh, mechanics might need to know some math, but there are so many areas out there that you can still provide wonderful services that people will exchange their things of value to you for. You don't have to have exactly a set curriculum all figured out. Everybody wants to learn how to read because that's how you learn about stuff. And if you don't want to learn how to read, okay. And when I have someone that I want to hire to work for me, and they can't read or write well or communicate well, they don't get the job. All they have to do is fix that. It's easy. Six months or a year, you can fix yourself. You can speak well. You can speak eloquently. You can, you can learn how to communicate professionally in a short amount of time if you're motivated and you want to. So I don't know. I think uh, I didn't talk that much about uh, private schools or government schools, uh, but I think on the kind of that spectrum of... Uh, of the whole, all the way from a government school to a private school to homeschooling to unschooling, I think the unschoolers might be onto something. Time will tell, but I really think they're onto something. If you're interested in this kind of thing, a couple people to read would be Dana Martin and John Taylor Gatto, uh, The Underground History of the American Educational System. Thick book, but worth it and fun. He also has a five hour series of five uh, videos on YouTube that explain a lot of what's in the book. Not all of it. I've, I've done both several times, but it's a pretty good, if you're not willing to spend hundred hours reading and you just want to get it done in five hours, the videos are well worth watching. As a matter of fact, I'll put a link to them uh, down below here. Thank you so much for watching and I would love it. It'd mean a lot to me if you'd subscribe. Thank you.